Hello, it's Samantha making another video from the comfort of my bed. I have been gone for a long time. It's just because we've been having a really fun summer with the family. We've been traveling a lot and it's been fun. I do try to post a video every weekend, even if it's just a quick short. Sometimes the video is posted on our second channel. The channel is called Samantha and Gray and sometimes it's posted on this channel. So if you want to see the other videos, then you can go check out that channel. Today I thought I would make a video about having a baby after breast cancer. This is one of the topics that I get the most questions, the most messages about. And since my story was recently featured on the Patient Story YouTube account, I've gotten a few more subscribers come in and ask questions about this. So I just thought that I would make a video about it. <laughs> Hopefully I cover your questions in this video, but if I don't, feel free to leave a comment down below. A little disclaimer, this video is about my experience and not everybody thinks the same way. And my goal in this video is not to convince you to have a baby after breast cancer if you're on the fence trying to think about it. My goal in this video is to explain my experience and kind of give you some things to think about for yourself. More and more people are having babies after breast cancer these days, even after hormone positive breast cancer. It used to be thought that you can't do that after having breast cancer, especially when it's hormone positive because your cancer uses hormones to grow and then when you're pregnant, you have a surge in estrogen and other hormones and so then your cancer could uh, grow and come back more aggressive because of the pregnancy. This is a real worry for sure. I'm not saying that you shouldn't consider this. But there is a study out there called the positive trial and it is about a lot of women who have had pregnancies after stage I think one to three breast cancer that is hormone positive. You can google this on your own if you would like but basically the results of this trial, this study showed that having a baby after breast cancer does not increase your risk of having the cancer return. So you obviously still have a chance of having your cancer come back after you've already had cancer, but having a baby doesn't make that risk greater. Um, they actually showed that the people who had babies had a lower recurrence slightly. A question I get is, but you had stage four cancer, so why then did you have a baby when there isn't any studies on it? So that's a loaded question and I get some questions in my Instagram messages a lot from people who are stage four who are asking this because a lot of people who have breast cancer, have stage four breast cancer, do want to know if it's possible to have a baby someday. And I am living proof that you can have a baby. Um, my cancer did come back, so that is another thing that I'm going to talk about later. But why did I have a baby when I had stage four cancer? The answer to that is, is that I had stage four breast cancer, but it was oleometastatic, which means it only spread to one other spot in the body. And the spot that it spread to was a rib, and it was a tiny little spot on the rib. We had hoped that by blasting that rib with radiation, um, all of the cancer had been removed from the other distant spot in my body and that I was cured because my scans showed that I was NED, no evidence of disease, three years after diagnosis. So even though there hasn't been studies with women who have had stage four breast cancer, I was taking a gamble, you could say, um, but I was hopeful that my cancer was behaving more like a stage three case than a stage four case because my cancer hadn't spread to a lot of places in the body like a lot of stage four breast cancers do. So after talking with my doctor, we were hopeful that I was cured and we were hopeful that um, the pregnancy would go well and that my cancer wouldn't return. I still knew that I had a chance of my cancer returning, especially since I had stage four breast cancer. Of course there was a chance my cancer could return. I was just hopeful that it wouldn't. And that's kind of the gamble that you're taking. You're saying you could have your cancer come back or you could not. And what this positive trial shows is that having a baby doesn't actually increase or decrease that chance, but you still are an individual person, the cancer still could come back. So that's a lot of people's worry when they are thinking about having a baby after breast cancer. They're worried about if their cancer comes back and how that would affect themselves and how that would affect their future child. 
again, this is my experience. I'm not trying to convince you of anything, but in my mind, my thought was, is I can't live with that worry of what if my cancer comes back. I felt like if I was living as if my cancer could come back, I was already living as if my cancer came back, if that makes sense, because I was limiting myself. I, if I was constantly having that fear in my mind, it would stop me from doing some of the things that I would wanna do in my life. So why not do the things that you can do while you can. I didn't have cancer at the time, so in my mind, I should be living my life to the fullest and taking advantage of it because who knows if one day my cancer could come back. And then if my cancer came back, my thought was I would want to have lived my life to the fullest while I could have. You never know when you're gonna wake up and not be able to do something again. You never know when you're not physically going to be able to do something. You don't know when is the last time you're going to be able to hike up a mountain or fly on a plane or do simple everyday tasks because things can change in an instant and you never know what can happen. So my motto just always is do what you can while you can do it and don't put it off if it's something that you really truly wanna do. And that might not be how you look at things and that is totally fine, but for me and myself, that was the only way I could remain sane. I couldn't let the fear and worry of cancer coming back control my life because it would be all I was thinking about all the time and I just couldn't live that way. The other thing that I had to wrap my mind around was I had to know that if my cancer did come back that I wouldn't regret my decision. So if you're trying to decide whether to have a baby and you think, oh, I might regret that decision if my cancer does come back, I would say don't have a baby then. These, these decisions are not split second decisions. So if you're struggling with it, just know it takes a lot of time to think about these things. It took me forever to think about these things. So I had to know that if I had a baby and my cancer returned, I wouldn't regret that decision. And I don't regret that decision because like I said, I had a baby after breast cancer, my cancer returned, I do not regret my decision at all. So I always try to make decisions that I know I won't regret. If I ever think, oh, I might regret that decision later on, then I just don't make that decision. Something that was very concerning to me when my cancer came back was trying to find a balance between being on an effective treatment and being able to be there for my daughter. And that's just something that you have to know that you will will have to figure out. And I do think that I've found that balance. I think that I am currently, after a little bit of trial and error, on a effective treatment that is working well according to scans and I am able to be here every day for my daughter. For the most part, obviously there are really bad days sometimes, but for the most part, I am able to be here every day for my daughter and tending to her needs. The other thing is, is that having her makes me fight more, makes me be way more positive in life. It doesn't make me sit around feeling sorry for myself because I have a baby now and she needs me. So now I get up every day not being like, oh, I feel sick, I'm just gonna lay in bed. I get up every day being like, oh, my daughter needs me to make her breakfast, so I'm gonna go make her breakfast. She needs me to read her these books, so I'm gonna go read these books. Every day of my life is focused around her and not about myself, and that really does help me push on and not feel sorry for myself and fight as hard as I possibly can. And also, I don't think that I would be on the current treatment that I'm on. I think I would be doing an easier treatment um, because I wouldn't be as worried about it if I didn't have her in my life. Now that I have her in my life, I want to fight a lot harder to stay alive. And it's not that I didn't have people in my life that I wanted to fight for before. Um, I did, of course, I have a great family. I have a great husband and support system, but having a little kid that is so dependent on you, I think really makes you fight. And I'm not saying that that's a reason to have a kid. Like, you sh it's kind of a weird reason to have a kid if you're like, oh, that'll push me forward. But I am saying that because I had that her, it is making me fight more and it is making me not be effective be affected as much by the medication if that makes sense so if you remember like being on chemo pre-kid and being on chemo post-kid being on chemo post-kid is like way easier i think i think it's just you find the strength to, to, to do the things that maybe you didn't even realize you could do pre-kid so i'm just trying to say that if you're worried about medication side effects and having a kid 
yes, that is a true, true concern, but I think that you would find a way because I have found that I can find a lot more strength to push through and do more things. One question that I get a lot is, how could you be so selfish to have a baby? And this question just makes me feel sad for the people who are asking it because these people clearly don't understand how amazing life is. They're saying that my baby could not have a mother and that I brought her into this world um, knowing that there is a chance she could not have a mother. And first of all, in my mind, there's always a chance that a kid could not have a mother. There's always a chance that you could die tomorrow. I could live 70 more years or I could die tomorrow. And every single person in the world has that, not that same chance, but that could happen to any individual person. So, I mean, when anyone has a kid, you always make a will. You always think about what would happen if you were to pass away. Life is still worth living, even if you have hardships in your life. I mean, I have cancer. I've been through all sorts of pain and physical and mental hard stuff in my life. And I still think life is beautiful and worth living. And I never for a second would wish that I wasn't alive. And I know people that don't have parents that don't have a mom or don't have a dad and they still think life is beautiful and worth living. And so it just makes me sad that you that you would ask such a thing because it must mean that you don't have a strong support system or family in your life because this kid, just let me tell you, has so many people in her life that love her. Of course, if I were to die, it would be hard on her, but she just has so many people in her life. She has a father, she has grandparents, aunts, uncles, cousins, like I said, she just has so many people that are there for her and that she loves and, and that love her. And maybe people that say that just don't understand it. And I feel sorry for you because I honestly have never been in that position. I have always had a really strong family relationship with my side of the family. And my husband has had that on his side of the family. And we together have had that with each other's families. And honestly, it just makes me sad to think about that. And I really hope that the people who are saying things like that find the love that they need um, in their lives and that they can experience that at some point and because it really is a beautiful thing life is a beautiful thing and I just feel I just feel sad that there are people asking it because they cannot comprehend that life is still worth living and that you can still have a happy fulfilling life with people around you who love and support you it's just so not my experience and I can't understand living in that experience that when I get that question it it just makes me think like I just don't understand it I don't understand how you could come up with that in your mind that that is a selfish thing to do to have a kid so I'm sorry that you feel that way um, we have tried very hard to make decisions that are best for our family specifically and like I said maybe having a baby is not right for you maybe you don't have a support system around you but we do and we feel good about it and we do have a will for if I die or if my husband dies or we both die and we have plans in place for our daughter and I think every parent in the world has that in place for their children if you don't have a support system that actually is a real concern because there were times where I was in treatment and there's still times when I go to the hospital and whenever I go to the hospital my sister watches my baby and um, my mom is there to watch my baby and they pick her up and they take her and they play with cousins and they go to the playground and they feed her and when I was on chemo and I um, had a few bad days a week, somebody would come over, my, my husband's mom or my mom, or like so many people were around all the time to help. And um, we never had to question that we would have that because we just knew that we would. So if that is something that you don't have, then I understand the concern, um, but that wasn't something that we ever had to think about. Honestly, I think that anyone who's having a kid should think about that. Um, what if this happens or that happens? You want to know that you have people in your life that can help out, and I, we just we just always have, and it's never been a question for us. So this is just something that we just knew that we wanted to do, and we knew that was right for our family. These are some other random concerns that people sometimes ask about having a baby after breast cancer. My pregnancy went well. There was nothing out of the ordinary with the pregnancy. I wasn't considered high risk. I was 
26 when I had her so I wasn't like in the some people are high risk because of their age but I wasn't high risk um, because of having cancer there was no reason everything went well I did breastfeed her after breast cancer and I have a whole entire video about that if you're interested in it um, I was only able to breastfeed from one breast um, the other breast did not really produce enough milk for it to be worth it, but the one side did make up for it, um, the unaffected side. So yeah, if you have any more questions about breastfeeding after breast cancer, check out that other video or message me on Instagram or leave a comment and I will do my best to um, get back to you. And if you have any other questions at all, leave a comment and like I just said, I will try my best to answer you. Thank you so much for watching this. Please subscribe if you want to follow along and hello to all the new people that have subscribed. We have recently gotten to 30,000 subscribers. That's really cool. Um, <laughs> I'm glad that the story is getting out there that awareness is being spread about breast cancer and young women and even having babies after breast cancer. So I think that's it. Yeah, that's all. Bye.